no, she's not good with cameras, so I apologize. But we were just like, for anybody that has any information, I don't remember a lot. But I did remember I was breaking up, you know, with the cops. But I know that if, if, if anybody's got anything, any, any places that I could have gone, anybody, did you know who you are? Please, find him, please. It mean a lot. It mean everything to us. And that's... Family ain't the same without family. That's for sure. All right, uh, Mark, what do you got? Uh, yeah, so let's just look at the linguistics uh, going on, because because for my money, they're enough. He kicks off with, I don't remember a lot. Well, that's that's handy. And I think, you know, maybe many of you will remember the episode we did uh, just the other week. And Chase was saying, I, I think it was the, the other week, Chase was saying, hey, one of the one of the trickiest things you can do to an interrogator is like, I don't remember. Well, he's already started that process of going, it'll be quite a good alibi if I don't remember anything. And, you know, there's a good chance there's some drug abuse there uh, as well. And so may well, may well doesn't remember, okay? Um, I do remember I was breaking up with the cops. Well, that just doesn't, I mean, you know, to, to one of Greg's points last week, sometimes culture and linguistics can come in, but even with culture and linguistics, I don't think that makes any sense, but let's, let's, let's carry on. Um, uh, if anybody got anything, any places I could have gone, Okay, if anybody got anything, any places I could have gone, uh, anybody, you know who you are. Well, okay, that seems to point in one direction. That seems to point to him. Uh, any places I could have gone, anybody got any places I could have gone, you know who you are. Okay, it's either pointing at him or it's still very confusing. It would mean uh, a lot. It would mean everything to us. And then he continues with, um, family ain't the same without family. Well, let's just break this down. We've got a lot of eyes. It's a lot about I, and uh, there's a lot of about you know places I I could have gone. So there's another I there. Uh, it would mean a lot to us, and uh, so it's all about them and family, not about CJ, and it's not about what you might be able to do out there, what you might be able to do about helping CJ, helping that child right now. It's a lot about us and, and I. And family ain't the same without family. That for me is distancing. So a lot of, a lot of word salad there, which could be cultural, but I don't think it is. I think there might even be some kind of embedded confession. It's about I, the cops, us, and distancing around the idea of family rather than let's talk about the child and how you could help the child right now. I, I, I'll leave it at that because I, I, I could take up more, but there'll be, uh, there'll be less left for other people. Chase, what do you got? Yep, absolutely agree. We have another case of the missing perpetrator. We need a sound of it. <laughs> yep. Thank you, bro. And you know, as, as I'm always fond of saying, it's a great quote that I invented, uh, you know, the behavior panel wouldn't be the same without the behavior panel. <laughs> <laughs> so true, so true. Uh, so the, this entire monologue is story focused and it's not, not talking about CJ at all. The husband, I think, is a has some mental issues. I'm not a diagnostician nor qualified to make a diagnosis, but this certainly looks like a malignant narcissist uh, on a base level. And uh, the rest of this, the rest of these videos, his behavior is controlling and threatening, and while expressing zero sadness, there's zero concern for the return of the baby, and. His only stress behaviors are in response to potential threat of being 
found out or be, or slipping up in the story. There's no grief on the wife, uh, only fear. We do see fear. We don't see sadness and grief. Both of them are more focused on getting this over with. Just kind of let's wrap let's let's wrap this up. Uh, and I think the sheriff already knows that he's he's wanting them to keep talking. And that that phrase, like you said, Mark, places I could have gone. We know where it happened. So I think this is a a, a slip. Freudian or otherwise. Uh, Greg? Yeah, I don't think we're dealing with Einstein here, first off. So his word patterns are probably a, a result of poor education, maybe, you know, that kind of thing. It also could be a result of lots of chemicals over time and not clear patterns of thought. Um, the thing for me, I'm going to say this out loud. Somebody's going to feel sorry for this knucklehead in the comments um, and say he needs counseling. Yeah, well, wall-to-wall -wall counseling is what he needs. He needs some kind of for hurting this kid. Anyway. All relationships have weird body language. They're all microcultures, every one of them. But most relationships don't have the microculture and the expression of fear. When a person holds another person by the shoulders, typically it's comforting. This woman's arm is across her torso and locked up tight. I agree. I don't see grief in either of these people talking about a baby who is missing. Now, Mark, I'll give you an alternative, what I think probably he's saying. He's saying, I remember we were breaking up and we were I think cops, he's editing as he speaks because he's cautious what he's going to say. I don't think he's swift. I think he's just, or my dad would have said he ain't too swift. I think he's just rolling along and he's trying to tell a story and editing along the way. And he's probably saying, hey, him and his girlfriend, wife, whatever the relationship, I'm not sure. Maybe they were breaking up. I told the cops is kind of what I hear. Remember, I'm a deep South boy too. So I live in the world that's a little different. Then I also hear him saying, anybody who knows where I would have been, that sounds code to me, like I'm blasted out of my mind and driving around is what that sounds like code for me. So I think there's probably, he's starting this whole story about how it happened and he might not even remember how, it, who knows? I'm, I don't know enough details of the case, but I would, I'm, I'm always cautious to try to read too much into language patterning in cultures that are this odd. Cause this is, this is South Alabama or they call it LA, lower Alabama. This is lower Alabama. And this is a poorly educated guy and also appears to have a drug issue and anger issues. At one point, if I were stroking my wife's hair to make her feel more comfortable, it wouldn't be with my knuckles, for example. There's all kinds of signaling of threat in this guy's body language. You can't miss it. And then she goes into something that Scott and I call transfer immediately. Doesn't mean she killed the kid, means she's hiding something. And that hide, when we prioritize our our feelings, grief takes back seat if there's an immediate threat often. We're going to get our bodies out of the place and we can deal with grief later. And she covers her face and she starts to be emotional and kind of rocking. And that's what we call transfer, emotionally unavailable so you can't talk to her. You guys already hit on the fact that her body is trying to separate from his and he grips and pulls her back in. Guys, if you see this in a service station, wonder if somebody's being trafficked. Look, something is not natural about a man physically grabbing a woman and moving her body around. And that's not comforting. I'll just leave it at that and say, every time I see this guy, and all the family isn't family, he's trying to, he's trying to appear human and appear to be softer than he is, is what I see here. There are very few people that I see that I immediately think not a lot of value. This guy's one of them. This guy, I look at him and think, yeah, immediately lock this guy up. We'll figure out for sure what happened, but he did something when I saw this. And yeah, is that is that a little bit of projection? Maybe, but there's enough stuff here to tell me that we'll figure out what he did, but this guy's done something. Scott, yeah. what do you got? I think, well, in this, throughout these videos, we're going to see behavior by her that says that, that will show uh, I'm concerned. I'm not concerned. I'm fe I'm afraid. I'm not afraid. Those types of things. For example, now we know this guy is an abuser already from the record he has. Now, if you watch when she when he when he first says she's not good with cameras, she looks up and smiles at him. And you're going to think, wow, she knows she's in on this as well. Here's why I don't think she's in on this. When you deal with a narcissist, when you deal with an abuser, that person being abused wants to connect with that person because they, when they first met that person, they were connected to him. When they were dating, they were connecting. He was nice to her. He was love bombing her, in other words, firing off oxytocin, serotonin, 
and get, and that helps her bond with him. Now, what they do is they cut off that oxytocin and that serotonin, those those good reactions and things, you know, those the, the positive reinforcement. And when they do that, that person is is in a way addicted to that oxytocin and that feeling they have from that that abuser or that narcissist and or the psychopath, whatever in whatever the case may be. So they'll do anything to make to get some of that, just to get a drop of it, to get like a, a heroin addict would do anything to get to get a hit of the drugs, man. But to get anything, they would they'll 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 try to get positive reinforcement from which gives them the oxytocin blast. That's what we're seeing here. We see that over and over and over. She can hardly lock eyes with this guy. Every time he looks at her, she looks away. And if he, when he's looking at her, he's looking over her head, and she's looking at him. And then when he looks at her, she looks away. These are these are classic signs of someone being abused. Um, and the, the hand that when she puts her hand to her face, uh, coming right out of the gate like that, that that denotes, from my experience, shame and guilt, which lets me know. And I'm just saying, me personally that she's got guilty knowledge. She knows what's happened. We know she knows what's happened. But here's how we know she knew earlier. Because she's showing us, because she doesn't know how to act. You're right, Greg, these people are, they're idiots. I mean, just I don't care, I don't care what he says. They can't call them, yeah, they're both idiots. Um, so they don't know how to act. He thinks he knows how to act. He thinks he knows how to act like a person who's feeling sorrow and sadness, but we don't see any, any, any expression of sadness. We don't see any heavy breathing. It's all actually light breathing. We don't see anything that lets us know he's stressed other than what, from, the, from the situation he's in, but no grief stress is what I'm, was what I'm trying to, to get to there. Um, uh, when she's covering her face, She's not. She's she's covering her face like this. You see the fingers going like this. She's pushing on pushing on her tear ducts because there are no. There are, she's not trying to push tears out, but there are no tears in there, and so what she's doing, she's pushing on those because she's thinking tears, tears, and there are none from either one of them. No grief muscle, no nothing. So when you watch her push on her face and you see her with her hands to her face, watch where her index fingers go right to the insides of her eyes on her tear ducts. There, um, yeah, I could go on. But um, but and and if you're an interrogator, this is how you step in and go, hey man, let's separate. We got to keep them separated. I don't think they've been talked to yet with this because look at the way they're acting. They don't have a story together. They haven't rehearsed it. They've said, okay, here's what happened. Okay, that's what happened, which is what usually happens when people do something. They'll say, here, okay, here's what happened. Here come the cops. You sit there real still in the car, and the car cops come up, and you all tell the same story because you've heard the driver telling the story. And so when it comes to the, the guy in the passenger seat or girl, he or she tells the story, the guys in the back seat tell the same story. But when you separate them, you haven't got that story clean yet. That's when you start finding out what the real, who's really being honest and who really isn't at that point. All right, that's, I'm going I'm to stop there. No, she's not good with cameras, so I apologize. But we were just like, for anybody that has any information, I don't remember a lot. What I did remember, I was breaking up, you know, with the cops. But I know that if, if, if anybody's got anything, any, any places that I could have gone, anybody, did you know who you are? Please, say, find him, please. It would mean a lot. It would mean everything to us. Family ain't the same without family. That's for sure. Is there anything else? If you like this video, Get the full body language breakdown and analysis on our main channel by clicking this video right here.